Right, uh, so welcome to our exclusive show here at thebatsman.com and uh, we, we, we were bringing you all the latest news and uh, all the latest information regarding the Lanka Premier League right from the beginning. And as a part of that, we're bringing you an uh, exclusive show from thebatsman.com and we have a special guest here today with us. And uh, before introducing him, let me introduce my... Uh, partner who's going to partner up with me for this uh, special episode, our very own uh, cricket commentator, Ricky Sims is uh, here with me. Ricky? Yes. Uh, hi, uh, Oshinda. Yes. Uh, now, just as I mentioned earlier, we have a guest here, a happy guest, I should say, considering the performances of the team that he's representing. And uh, he's a vice president of communications at Jafta Stallions, who's joining us from all the way from uh, Toronto, Canada. And it's uh, Mr. Mahesh Abevardhana. Mr. Mahesh. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so a warm uh, welcome uh, to you, uh, uh, Mahesh. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us all the way from uh, Canada, as Osanda said. Tell us something about the weather first in uh, Canada. I'm sure it's very different here in Sri Lanka. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, I have to look at the matches to feel the warmth. It's, it's uh, quite cool. It's about zero degrees, just above the freezing mark. Uh, so, but, you know, just feel really good. We have a good warm feeling here uh, watching the matches. That is good indeed. Uh, have, have you been able uh, to uh, sort of uh, watch all the matches uh, the Jaffna Stallions have uh, played and have you enjoyed the LPL uh, so far, Mr. Abewarden? Well, uh, uh, Ricky, I can't, uh, I can't deny the fact uh, if, if I said I wasn't happy, we're, we're, we're on a very good winning streak, uh, four matches. Uh, it's been enjoyable, uh, I mean, the, from an entertainment standpoint. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. We're we're at the halfway mark, and uh, th there's there's excitement uh, definitely from from not only in Sri Lanka but right across the world from what we're hearing. The LPL itself, it's it was a much look forward uh, uh, cricketing event uh, or a sporting event in general coming to Sri Lanka. It has been a long, long uh, time. The first uh, cricket league was played way back in uh, 2012. Since then, it, it never happened annually after that. But eight long years, it was finally uh, amidst a, a lot of, uh, we would say, setbacks, the coronavirus pandemic, players pulling out at the last moment, security reasons. But uh, finally, it's here. It's alive and uh, kicking. And uh, so far, as you mentioned, midway through the tournament, how have you seen the LPL uh, tournament uh, progress in general? It's, it, it's, it's progressed well. I mean, you, uh, you have to look at the challenges. There were considerable challenges. Uh, getting off the ground, uh, it, it doesn't help being in the middle of a pandemic, uh, which, we, which we are in. So that needs to be given uh, due respect. Uh, but definitely there will be some lessons learned and, and we can take that into next year, make things better. And I know that when you have fans in the stadium uh, and you have uh, more people coming into the country, uh, that can definitely uh, increase the, 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 the vitality of this tournament. And, and, and make it an international spectacle. Yes, uh, tell us something about uh, how you got involved uh, with the uh, Jaffna uh, Stadiums first, uh, Mr. Bewardena. Yes, uh, well, well when, when I was uh, invited to join as a, as a communications uh, vice president through the uh, consortium, which uh, runs the, 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 lead, the franchise, I was excited uh, about the prospects. I knew that Jaffna, Stallions had a unique story to tell, and I wanted to be part of that. Uh, the Jaffna Stallions uh, have the potential to do something special in this country. Uh, just apart from the LPL, going beyond that, uh, we have a long-term plan to build an academy to, to channel young talent from the North and bring them into a mainstream cricket in Sri Lanka. So when I found out about this opportunity and uh, I, I jumped on it because I wanted to be part of this bigger picture. Uh, and uh, if I could play a small role in that franchise and be part of history, why not? It, it, it's something that I enjoy you know, waking up early in the morning or even staying up late talking to you. That's, that's something I do with great pride. Yeah, can you tell right. us uh, something yeah. more uh, about the sorry, Osan, there's something more about the bigger picture uh, as well about the uh, Jaffna Stallions? You were talking about something more about uh, the structure of uh, the Jaffna Stallions. Yes, uh, 
in, in terms of, uh, of our long-term outlook or, or our consortium in general? A consortium uh, in general, how it has uh, come about, yeah. Yes, so uh, th this is, this is the, the, the architect of this consortium is Mr. Anandan Arnold, who is our uh, chief executive. And uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's born in Jaffna and uh, he's, he's currently uh, in the UK. And he, he has a great passion for, for developing cricket in Jaffna. If you, if you speak to him, if, you, if you're just around him for about five minutes, you will get that understanding. He, he sees the bigger picture. He's not just in it for short-term gains or just the LPL. He wants to see these boys uh, come in to the mainstream uh, cricket uh, setup in Sri Lanka and to go on to do great things, even play at the international level or even go on and play to, for another franchise. This is something that, that we want to see and people are picking up on his lead. That's why the consortium has grown so much. We, we, we have members in Seattle, uh, Toronto, Paris, uh, Australia. Uh, and uh, the most exciting news to take place was a couple of weeks ago when we invited uh, Mr. Rahul Sud, uh, the, the founder of Microsoft Ventures to join us. As soon as he came on, he took our logo, transformed it, uh, and, and brought a real sense of energy coming from the tech industry in, in uh, the North uh, Pacific in, in the United States, where big companies like Amazon and Microsoft are based. And that new energy was taken in today, even when we released our new jersey. He was part of it every step of the way. Even now he's working on something. So he's giving that energy to our marketing team, to our social media team. And that's something that we can thrive on by having that expanded network in the consortium, we can draw talent from uh, all around the world and bring it into this team and into the franchise and increase uh, the elevation of, of uh, the Lanka Premier League in general. So it's, uh, that's something that's very exciting about this franchise. And, and, and I think we're gonna grow. We have a, a lot of interest uh, and, and more people that we can bring in to, to uh, enhance uh, the experience. Yeah. And now we're talking about the, this whole Jaffna Stallions team. Now, unlike any other team, I, we have seen that uh, you guys have this unique structure uh, as, as a team, as, as, a, as a, a whole organization. So now if you look at the team itself, the squad for the Jaffna Stallions, you have backed up uh, young cricketers, especially from northern areas. Now, if we talk about uh, four main players, Sebastian Pille Vijayraj, you have Thivendram Dinoshan, uh, Vijay Kant, Uyes uh, Kant, and Kanagar Ratnam, Kabil Ratnam. All these are young players who are budding cricketers from, uh, from northern areas in Sri Lanka. So what was the thought process of, uh, behind getting these players into the team and how important do you think it is for the future of these players? Definitely. That's a good question. We, we, by bringing these players in, it was just one stage of our five-stage plan. Uh, bringing the players in, starting the academy, and then bringing more players in, not only from the north, uh, northern province, but from rural areas, especially players that don't have the means to make it into cricket for whatever, whatever reason, economic reasons, whatever the reason may be, they have the talent, they just don't have the resources. So this is part of our long-term plan and also a plan to give uh, real life skills to these players, being in a dressing room around uh, national players, international players, uh, you know, being cricket journalists yourselves, you know what that can do for someone, a young player, what they can, what they can achieve by just being around that level of talent, the coach, even the coach. We went with a, a local coach, uh, uh, Kandambi, because he can be around even in the off-season if we need to call upon him to, to even go to Jaffna to talk to these players, to make improvements. There was, there's a thought process behind this to, to go with a, a local coach part of our long-term uh, plan. So this, this is something that you're going to see uh, and, uh, and, and we have to nurture these players. Uh, it'll take some time. Uh, they, they need to get this experience, but this will be, uh, I think, a life-changing moment for them in, in their careers uh, as they just start. Yes, adding on to that, uh, I think you have picked the right coach as well. I, I mentioned earlier, eight years ago, the first league was played in uh, Sri Lanka. And then that champion team, the team that won that league, was captained by Tilina Kandambi. And yes. uh, you have another player who was a star of that uh, league, then Ashoy Malik as well. 
So you have uh, two in your setup that uh, who are the champions uh, from uh, eight years ago. I think so. That that's a good uh, combination, definitely, and adds that and that experience uh, of uh, playing uh, in a Premier League or a, a league of this uh, stature. Just yes. adding on to Oshanda's question itself, I mean, I was uh, lucky to be a part of uh, the Jephthah big match last March. That was just a week before the coronavirus stuck Sri Lanka and lockdown came in and I was there for five days covering the, the big match. And the two of those players who Oshanda mentioned just now were part of that uh, big match. And we saw a lot of talent, a lot of uh, potential uh, in them, but... Uh, uh, if, unfortunately, some of them over the years have fallen or fallen away. So uh, I, I presume you, like you mentioned, you have spotted this uh, talent and um, you have uh, found a pathway uh, to lead them on to. And, and another problem when we we actually saw Mr. Abhiwadana when we were in Jaffna is the lack of infrastructure, like you said, especially turf wickets. Now, yes. we, we have uh, been fortunate uh, to cover some of the school matches. They, unfortunately, they play a lot of their cricket on matting wickets in Jaffna. And when they come to Colombo, they have to play on turf wickets. And some of these boys uh, have struggled uh, to make that adjustment uh, quickly. So to tell us something. Uh, I'm sure you all have identified those uh, shortcomings. If I'm right, there are only two turf wickets uh, down in Jaffna. Uh, one was inaugurated uh, a couple of years ago, but it was never used, in fact, because they don't have a curator. In fact, uh, to use that uh, turf pitch, it's very, very unfortunate. And going down, when you look at the history, uh, the big match in Jaffna is the fourth longest big match in the country, uh, dating back to, uh, I think, 1901. And uh, we had the 114th big match between uh, St. John's and uh, Jaffna Central. Uh, so how do you look to develop on that? And what is the infrastructure also you're looking at uh, going into the future? Yes, uh, yeah, th thank you for that, Ricky. Uh, yeah, sometimes we, we often forget about uh, big matches uh, around the rest of the country and, and we're sometimes very focused and siloed about the Colombo uh, big matches and the schools there and, and, and the setup. But uh, Jaffna does have a very rich cricketing tradition. Uh, we know that big matches also played around the world through alumni across, uh, even in North America where I am, that's, that's, that's the centerpiece every summer. So there's, there's, there's a great deal of pride associated with school cricketing in Jaffna. And you mentioned an important point about the infrastructure. Uh, there is maybe one or two turf wickets, if I'm correct. Uh, that is something that we're aware of. And we hope that with the rise of the Jaffna Stallions and the LPL, uh, we're bringing light to this situation. Uh, our CEO, uh, Mr. Anandan, has mentioned this on the record that more needs to be done uh, with partnerships, not only with the Sri Lanka Cricket Board, the, the Northern uh, District Board uh, and the Jaffna Board, but also private partnerships uh, where we should also play a role in, in developing this in infrastructure. Uh, you can't have these cricketers uh, going down to Colombo, leaving their homes to practice. So we need to have uh, a plan for that as well. And we'll need to work with all these partners, but I believe the SLC has identified the issue and they're, they're working on something. And, and with, with the rise of, of the Stallions and, and more attention on Jaffna now, uh, I think there will be a shift in momentum towards developing that infrastructure and, and making sure we make some gains for, for the cricketers in that region uh, to, to have proper facilities. Right. Uh, so just to add, uh, add to that uh, question from Ricky now, uh, if, if, if we look at uh, this whole structure, uh, especially the school cricket structure and uh, beyond that, because in terms of uplifting this cricket, uh, especially in the northern areas and in the rural areas collectively in Sri Lanka, what, how is the support you're getting from uh, local institutes and what are the plans to get more support from these uh, local institutes in order to uplift the, the cricket, especially in these uh, young, uh, younger cricketers? Yes, uh, Oshid, so what, what we've done uh, in, in our preliminary steps here is we, we have already allocated a, a piece of land that can be developed for a cricket academy in Jaffna City itself. Uh, what was identified by, by, our, uh, by our CEO, who was who's born and raised in Jaffna, is that we need to have a facility in, in Jaffna City itself, because most people 
uh, do use a bike and a motorcycle to to access this. So having something maybe in, in uh, further south may not make any sense and make it less accessible. So we have identified a piece of land. Uh, we want to work on it for, for the academy. So that's something that we're working on. Maybe we'll, we'll work out with private partners as well. With the pandemic, it has been difficult uh, for private partners to come in because of their budget restrictions, but we're still moving ahead. Uh, we're, we're making those initial steps. So that is part of our list of five uh, options that we're going forward with. Another option that we have, another stage that we have is, is to have uh, a cricket team in the local circuit in, in one of the divisions. So we're working, we'll work with the SLC to have a Stallions team that will compete in these uh, domestic tournaments going forward because it, uh, we know T20 cricket is, is one thing, but you have to have uh, development right throughout the year. So that is something that we're in, in talks as well. So those are the two areas that, that we're focusing on uh, going forward. Now, uh, let me ask you, there's a burning question in uh, social media circulating these days now uh, with the jersey. Now, we saw in the, uh, in the match that uh, just the Stadions came with a different outfit. And uh, we saw in the social media as well, there's this... Uh, uh, report coming from Jeff Stallion saying that uh, this was to make awareness of uh, some environmental impacts. Can you talk us through this? Yes. Um, the, the, the jersey was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when Mr. Rahul Sud came in, uh, he brought us a different outlook, a way of thinking. Uh, even our logo was redesigned. If you remember the earlier version, it was redesigned very quickly uh, right before the tournament started. So as soon as he arrived, he 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 started working right away with our team. And uh, he's bringing that North American perspective of, of the franchise leagues to create, uh, you know, a very nice brand that we can all be proud of. Uh, as, as cricket fans, uh, even the players can be proud to wear uh, modern, exciting uh, look. So this is something, and, and to also grow our fan base. So this is something that we, we wanted to do. So this, this jersey was, was part of this. Uh, and I can tell you uh, that we will have other versions of the jersey that will be available. Uh, there will be a, a jersey, a signature edition with a former cricketer that we're developing as well. And the proceeds of that jersey will go towards um, uh, the Jaffna Academy that we're, we're working on. So details on that will keep you posted, but uh, that will be coming up soon within a week or so. Uh, so we're very excited about our jersey. We have inquiries coming for our jerseys as far away as Australia. Uh, Vancouver in, in, in Canada, people watching the games with their families who have roots in Jaffna or, or people who have roots you know, elsewhere in the country just want to get their hands on one of these jerseys. So we're very happy about uh, uh, that, that branding and, and uh, the nature of it. Yes, uh, you mentioned us uh, to uh, us uh, off here, Mr. Uh, Bevor, then that, that there was uh, some past cricketers, Sri Lankan cricketers, uh, who have helped you or assisted uh, you all in uh, launching this franchise. Can you touch upon uh, something more about that? Yes, um, in terms of uh, uh, support we received uh, just just prior to on the eve of our first game, uh, Mr. Kumar Sangakara uh, met with us via Zoom and spoke to our players and uh, really gave a nice talk uh, to them, the, the importance of the integrity of the game, the importance of really representing Jaffna. This is the first team, that the professional team representing the city of Jaffna. So the, the importance of that, he, he articulated that very well to, to us, to, to our players. So uh, he, he, he made himself uh, available to, to, to players if they need any support or any any, any, any guidance, uh, these, these are the types of things that, that really help us and, and, his, and his support on social media, he's always tweeting and, and supporting our team. So the, uh, we really felt heartened by that. And, uh, and uh, we, we look forward to, there were other cricketers as well who, who had uh, supported us on social media, but uh, I think uh, Kumar's support uh, really uh, got us, us thinking and he, and he addressed the team both in, in uh, English and, and Singhalese and uh, was, was very inspirational, as he always is when he speaks. Right. Uh, so, Ricky, if you have any questions, if you don't have any questions, I think we yes. can uh, conclude so, this session. Uh, yes, sir. So, pr probably 
uh, in the next year if all goes uh, well uh, we might uh, see you in uh, Colombo Sri Lanka Mr Abhivardhan uh, watching the uh, Lanka Premier League probably yes uh, of course uh, I, would, I would want to see the games and I, and I hope, and I'm, and I definitely know you and Oshada would want to be in that press box <laughs> to, definitely to back in life <laughs> why not it's not any yeah, fun. Yeah, we, are, we are already harassing uh, Saranga, so, so you will be next in line probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you would want to be in that press box. You would want to be. There's nothing more lively than watching uh, a match in, in Sri Lanka with, with the Papare bands, uh, the fans who, who are exciting, diverse, uh, who have a great time. I mean, Sri Lankan fans, wherever you go, uh, I've seen matches in Canada when Sri Lanka has toured, I've seen matches in Florida, I've seen matches in Australia. And that same environment that is replicated in matches in, in Sri Lanka is taken around the world. So what, what, what better place than to come and watch the matches in, in Sri Lanka? I'm already jealous with some of the, uh, our members of our management who are in Hambantota uh, uh, that I couldn't be there. But you know, we, can, we can look forward to, to next year and for, for better times to, uh, to enjoy these matches. Yes, so just one more question before you leave. You were talking about fans. What has so far the response or the reaction been from the fans from the Jaffna or, or from the East who are following the Jaffna Stallions? We've seen uh, a very strong following. Uh, a lot of young fans making videos on TikTok, uh, adding their own songs. Uh, a lot of requests for our song to come out. I, I know we're working on that. It should be out uh, in a day or two. So there's a lot of excitement. I think uh, our team gives a lot of hope. Uh, it, has, it has a good message. Uh, and it doesn't, once again, it doesn't hurt that we're winning. So, so we have some bandwagon fans who are joining from <laughs> other, other teams, which is nice. Uh, and, and we want to maintain that fan base. Uh, we're, we're very excited about uh, and very happy that uh, a lot of fans have surrounded, uh, rallied around uh, Jaffna. It's just very heartening to see. That's great. Well, one thing I have noticed uh, when it comes to franchise cricket, especially the, in the IPL in India, that uh, successful uh, structure, I mean, it's not only the success, the success on field comes from the success for the those who are doing the hard work uh, behind the scenes. I think a successful franchise, successful management, successful coaching setup, everything contributes uh, to uh, the performance on the field. And uh, so far from what I have seen in the Sri Lanka Premier League, I think... Uh, uh, the Jaffna Stallions have that in place and I think that has uh, paved the way for the success in the uh, first uh, four games. So uh, good luck uh, to you, Mr. Abed and Good luck to your franchise, uh, to your structure, to all the players and uh, hope uh, to uh, see you all in the finals of the Lanka Premier League. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Oshada. Uh, appreciate being on your show today. Right, uh, so with that remark, we would like to conclude today's session. So once again, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mahesh Abhivardhana, Vice President Communications of Jaffna Stallions, uh, uh, who joined with us from all the way from uh, Canada, Toronto. So yeah, once again, thank you. And uh, thank you, for Ricky, as well, for joining with me today in order to uh, ask these questions, these burning questions from uh, Mr. Uh, Mahesh. Right, uh, so with that, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, joining us through thebatsman.com. And once again, adding, if you need any sort of clarifications about any sort of news or just to get a glimpse about these young, talented players from Jaffna, these four players, as I mentioned earlier, all you have to do is just uh, type in www.batsman.com and just typing in these names in the search bar would get them, uh, would get you to their profiles. And we have all the stats related to these players right from their school times and to the state that they're currently in. So uh, with reminding that, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you.